This is the DMT One to One Show, episode 30, on the 10th of October 2013, a feature on the new BBC Playlister, including interviews with executives from the BBC, Deezer and Spotify. This week's show is sponsored by media law firm Sheridan's at sheridans.co.uk. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's one-to-one show. So this week the show is going to cover the BBC's Playlister, which was launched this week. Uh, what I thought I'd do for this show is to start with a quick overview of what the Playlister does with a screencast and then I'll have three short interviews that I recorded uh, at the BBC uh, during the launch event uh, with uh, uh, Mark Friend, uh, who is a, a multi-platform radio controller uh, at the BBC, Mark Foster, MD of UK and Ireland at Deezer, and Chris Maples, VP of Europe at Spotify. But first, let's start with an overview of uh, the playlister. So, if you go on the BBC Playlister website, you'll be presented with uh, a first screen that uh, shows you uh, a number of tracks that have been played recently on uh, the BBC uh, channels. Uh, so, what you can do uh, through the playlister, one of the most uh, important functionalities, is to be able to add those tracks to a playlist. So you just have to click uh, add to playlister on any of the buttons that are uh, shown in the video. So these are like little musical notes with a plus. So you just have to click on that. Uh, and as long as you're logged into the BBC systems, uh, it will add that to your playlist. If you're not logged in, it will prompt you to register, of course. Uh, so then you can go onto any radio station's uh, uh, website, uh, BBC One, BBC Two, BBC uh, Six Music, uh, and uh, you will find that uh, the tracks that are being played at the time uh, all have a little playlist or button uh, on uh, the side, uh, just uh, below the track, and you can use that to add any of the tracks uh, to the playlist or playlist. So uh, I guess uh, you'll be wondering what happens uh, after uh, you've added these tracks to uh, the playlist. Well, uh, of course, they all get uh, ported into, uh, oh, and here uh, we can go and have a look at the uh, Radio 2 website. Again, uh, all the tracks that are being played at the time are uh, uh, can be added to the playlister. Then you go into your uh, playlist, uh, which is uh, uh, what results uh, from all the clicks we've just made. And there's a few more tracks that I added earlier as an experiment. And you can see all the tracks you added uh, through the various sites. Uh, once you've done that, the cool thing about the playlist is that you can export all these tracks. And the choice of services now is limited to Spotify, YouTube, and Deezer, but I'm sure many more will be coming in the near future. So here you just have to uh, accept the disclaimer that you're being being brought onto a third-party website that may display advertising. Of course, the BBC doesn't in the UK. It shows you that 11 out of 14 tracks of the playlist uh, were added uh, uh, successfully. And so then you're brought outside of uh, the playlist environment uh, into a browser and then redirected into the Spotify desktop client uh, where uh, the app uh, of the BBC playlist opens automatically and it shows the playlist that you've just compiled. Uh, if you go to the homepage of the playlist uh, on the Spotify app, uh, it's all really about curation and there is a bunch of playlists uh, that have been curated uh, uh, directly by the DJs uh, that are working at the BBC. So you can see Zane Lowe there who was also present at the launch event uh, uh, this week. Um, if you go on the BBC Radio 2, uh, it's taking a little bit of time to load, but you can see playlists compiled by the DJs there. And uh, if I go on to uh, Six Music, for example, um, there's a few playlists here as well. Uh, let's go on to the Steve Lamac uh, uh, playlist. Uh, and uh, what you can do is to, uh, you can uh, follow that uh, particular playlist. So essentially you subscribe to the playlist and that gets added uh, uh, to uh, the list of Spotify playlists that you have uh, in the system as you can see in the video if you are watching the video version of the show. Uh, so yeah, uh, once uh, you've done all that uh, we can get out uh, and uh, you know the same process you can repeat uh, with Deezer and with uh, YouTube of course uh, uh, the Spotify app makes the experience a bit more integrated uh, at this point uh, but I'm sure that there'll be more uh, Intri intriguing experiences uh, presented by other services as well and uh, I would imagine some of the uh, services that have not launched uh, with the playlister uh, will be adding that soon and uh, uh, so that's pretty much it but uh, I'm going to start with uh, the first interview which is an interview with uh, Mark Friend uh, who is a, a multi-platform radio controller at the BBC. Let's talk about the uh, playlister which has been unveiled today. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a really exciting development for the BBC and uh, it really brings together all your uh, sort of music heritage and presents it into, into a very uh, interesting and interactive digital uh, way. So when did that process start and when did you start thinking about a platform like this? 
we've been thinking for a while about how we translate what we do really well on linear radio and linear TV, which is act as a curator and a filter for music, uh, and how we can translate that into the online music services that people use. Yeah. Um, so we've been thinking about this for quite a, quite a while, about how best to do that uh, and how we fit with the market. Um, and we think we've come up with a really good, uh, compelling uh, product. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's a development that, say, two years ago wouldn't have been possible because so many things have happened. A lot of these companies that, you know, you're partnered with, like uh, Deezer, Spotify, and YouTube, have uh, opened up APIs and make all this possible. So, uh, you know, how do you, this is only the tip of the iceberg for the BBC in terms of the, the playlist, sir. Uh, where do you see that going in two years' time? So we have, you know, we, there's, there's quite a lot of technical challenges yeah. uh, to get this right. And actually, it's not sexy, but um, it kind of is sexy, but it's data. So actually, the, the challenge with all of this is getting the data right. Yeah. So, so making sure that we can surface data out of our radio programs and TV programs in a timely way so that you can do it live as well as on demand, making sure we can match that data at a track level or for classical music, maybe in the future at a performance level, you know, who's performed that as well as what piece is it. Um, and then match that in with third parties so you get the right recording. Those are really big challenges. So, you know, part of what you'll see, I say it's not terribly sexy, but it's the guts of this, yeah. is, uh, is rolling this out uh, more widely to a wider range of radio and TV services and a wider range of partners yeah. as we find we can get those data issues right. Exactly. And it feels like it's a, it's a, a role that uh, benefits both uh, uh, the BBC and the partners that you're working with because for the BBC it's a way for the reach of the platform to really expand to audiences that perhaps are not tuned into tra traditional radio anymore and for the partners it's a great way for, for to curate the content. So uh, how do you feel about the way in which it may help you uh, actually reach a wider audience worldwide? Uh, so we, you know, we see this as part of our role is to curate music, yeah. and that's all about how we can take that voice and extend it further. Um, and and this is just the first step, really, in trying to trying to transplant uh, that authoritative voice in music into into the places that people normally go for music. That's great. Well, it, it sounds like a very interesting initiative and uh, definitely I think the listeners around the world of Digital Music Trends are going to be pretty excited about checking it out. And uh, thanks so much for your time. Great. Thank you, Andre. I'm here at the Playlist Unveiling with Mark Foster, MD of uh, uh, Deezer, uh, UK and Ireland. So hi, Mark, and great to have you on. How's it going? Hi, nice to see you again. So it's great to be here at the unveiling of the Playlist. It's a incredibly exciting product from the BBC and it's uh, very cool to see it uh, uh, come across into Deezer as well. So uh, when did you start working with the BBC on, on getting this out? When did we start? Oh, a few months ago now actually. Um, they originally talked to us about the concept back in about March or April and obviously it's quite a complicated process because essentially you're, you're marrying two very different technologies. Yeah. Um, so they they have to look at our API and see how to build the platform on the on the structure that we've got and um, and work with within the rights that we have negotiated with rights holders. But it's taken a few months and obviously there's some there's some legal issues as well. Um, but uh, it's over the line now. And we're very happy to be part of it. That's awesome. That's great. And it's it's a fantastic way for uh, for you to provide your audience with uh, an added. Uh, way of curating content as well, isn't it? You know, you have this huge catalogue and it's an additional way for you, the BBC to get their you know, content across and also you to provide a better way for people to curate that. Yeah, the two most exciting things for us are um, the editorial approach. So yeah. obviously, you know, we've always placed a very strong emphasis at Deezer on curated content about trusted editors who can make recommendations that are relevant to people. Yeah. Um, and the, the BBC do that with obviously their DJs and uh, other curators who are known, perhaps household names, big stars, and so people, they, they have a lot of following and, and people trust what they have to say. Yeah. Um, the other aspect for us is, is the mobility aspect, obviously, so now you can, you can make your playlists on the BBC, you can uh, export them to Deezer and take them with you wherever you are, so online, offline, on your mobile device, in the car, in the train, on holiday, wherever, so it's very exciting um, means of making it a personalized experience a mobile one and it's very exciting because it's only the beginning so we're going to see i think a lot more coming from this yes i think the, the beta version that's launched today is very much the tip of the iceberg yeah. uh, it's almost infinite the possibilities that you can do with new apps new functionality new ways of introducing people to new music uh, and artists to, to new fans uh, so the interactivity is very exciting for for musicians as well Great. Well, thanks, Mark, for your time. No, you're welcome. Nice to see you. I'm here at the playlist uh, unveiling with uh, Chris Maple, a VP of uh, Europe of uh, at Spotify. So it's a uh, great, Chris, to have you here. Uh, so uh, the playlist is uh, really exciting, a uh, really exciting development for uh, 
the BBC and also for Spotify. And there's going to be an app that is going to go live uh, later today. Yep. So uh, when did you start working with the BBC and how did that process go? So we've been working with the BBC for around about a year now. Um, the process has been fantastic. You know, the BBC is a very important part of the fabric of, uh, of music and music discovery. So we wanted to, both parties think, wanted to make sure that we did this right. We did it with consideration given their heritage in, 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 in uh, the musical space. And so we've worked really closely and we've partnered right the way across the organisation with the BBC for about a year. And we're delighted uh, that we can now finally unveil it to the world. And we think it's going to be a fantastic part of our service. And I think it's going to add uh, uh, a real depth to music discovery both uh, through the BBC site but also through Spotify as well. Yeah sure and, and of course uh, for, for Spotify it's great to have an additional channel and it, but it goes both ways you know the BBC on the one side uh, you know they want to have a broader reach worldwide and yeah. you can provide that with your service being live in so many countries and uh, and the BBC on the uh, and you on the other side get a fantastic curation source uh, for, for the service so uh, how do you feel users are going to react uh, to the service and do you think that uh, uh, it's going to be something that also helps BBC uh, expand their reach worldwide. I, I, I think I think users are going to love this uh, from both sides. I think uh, existing you know uh, viewers or listeners of the BBC and also Spotify users, I think they're just going to love this service. How many times have you been uh, watching a show or listening to a radio station and loved a track and then instantly forgot yeah. and then couldn't figure out where, where it was? And now there's an opportunity to find that as well. Um, there's an opportunity to have a much closer one-to-one -one relationship with the uh, DJs through the service as well and really start getting under the skin of their musical taste as well and I think that's really interesting and sure. Zane touched on it as well you know the opportunity for them to really interact with their user base now to start helping shape the programming of the audience as well I think uh, of their uh, uh, of their program I think is fantastic so it's a great partnership we've worked very closely to make sure this is right and we think uh, 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 as the guy said earlier on you know this is just the beginning and this Absolutely. this service can get richer and deeper and expand um, very quickly. And last question about uh, talking about uh, the labels. Uh, of course, you, you are great partners for Spotify and uh, all the other services that are launched here today. Uh, I'm wondering what their uh, take would be on this. I think you know I would be quite excited as a label because uh, a lot, lots of lots of labels listen to the mm -hmm. show as well uh, to know that this is happening because it gives people a real opportunity to connect with the music that's being played by the BBC and find out more about it. Right? Yeah. I mean, look, our. our our main driver is delivering music to people and helping people discover both new music and also music they'd forgotten they loved as well. So this is another great opportunity to do that. From the record industry perspective, I think, you know, the ability for people to, as I said, discover music and go on a journey with music or with DJs to help them curate their, their listening, I think is enormous. And anything that makes... Um, people discover, listen to, share more music. It's got to be good for everyone. That's great. Well, thanks so much for your time, Chris. My pleasure. Thanks. And that's all for this week. But before you go, a short information piece that I recorded with this week's sponsors of the DMT One to One, media law firm Sheridan's on digital service providers and how to get deals done. I'm here with uh, Tahir Bashir and we continue our series of segments on uh, digital service providers. So hi Tahir and thanks for joining. Thanks for having me on the show. And so today we're going to talk about deals. Uh, and so first of all, uh, deals between uh, digital service providers and rights holders can be very complicated and uh, you know it can be quite a mess. So how do you start the conversation so that it doesn't hit a roadblock right away? Yeah, uh, from the digital service provider's perspective, uh, get the... Um, get the content owner to buy into the product itself, the service itself. So uh, uh, I think before going into deal structures, you need to get them to understand that what you're trying to do. And then in terms of uh, speeding up that deal conversation, um, take control of the deal itself. Yeah. So uh, tell, make sure you know your own business model. Make sure that you've thought through your business model um, and uh, present them with uh, something that that perhaps works for them. You know, one thing that uh, you know I try and uh, encourage DSPs to do is to you know work from a blank sheet in yeah. terms of the deal itself. Don't try and fit your model into an already existing model because quite often that causes problems. Uh, your your deal should reflect what you do. Yeah. And how do you deal with uh, looking at the future? You know, of course, uh, you have to think uh, when you're making a deal both uh, of, of both potential outcomes uh, both uh, you know if, if you're a new company whether you're gonna blow up and you know how that uh, the, the terms that you are signing up to uh, scale uh, to, to a, a much larger audience mm -hmm. but also on the other end if your venture doesn't go well uh, how do you deal with that and what's the potential fallout uh, from the contract so mm -hmm. how, how do you do you, do you take care of those two potential eventualities in your negotiation yeah I mean uh 
it's not a level playing field when you're acting for a digital service provider because ultimately you need content and the content only comes from a certain number of sources. So in terms of how much leverage you have to control that future planning, uh, sometimes it's not in your hands. But there are things that you can do. Um, what you try and do is uh, effectively think about things like you know um, targets, yeah. work ag against targets so you have different rates until you get to that target and different rates when you get beyond that target. Um, you know, uh, uh, you know, from a digital service provider, this concept of upfront payments and upfront guarantees is a very difficult thing to do. So unless you've got the funding, that's a hard thing to do. So rather than going down that route, um, being a bit more uh, uh, open to the concept of if you hit your targets then there are you know perhaps a, a bigger payment at that stage yeah. so uh, the the use of the rights is really important as well because if you future plan if future planned your service and you think where it's going ideally you try and get the rights for all those different things in reality you probably have to take baby steps first because uh, ultimately you're trying to buy the confidence of the rights holder so ultimately getting all the rights in one go at the start for minimum payment very difficult yeah. so get the rights that you need which then has a knock-on impact on what you have to pay and then build on that but build in things like review periods discussions on potential uses into your deal so that it's in the mindset of the rights holder that you know you're going to come back to the table to discuss these other initiatives of course well thank you very much until the next segment thank you very much Thanks for listening to the DMT One to One show and remember to check out digitalmusictrends.com for our weekly news show.